This regular meeting of the Board of School Commissioners will come to order at this time. Uh, I would like to ask that uh, Mr. Harwell lead us in the prayer and pledge. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today, God. I thank you for your many blessings, God. I ask you to be with, the, be with us tonight as we talk about school business, God. I ask you to bless everyone that's here, God. I ask you to be with those families that's affected by the tragedies in our schools around the country, God. Continue to be with them and, and comfort them somehow, God. And I just ask all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, do I hear a motion about the or for the approval of minutes so of previous meetings? Second. Second. And moved and properly seconded to approve the minutes. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Do you have a motion for the agenda adoption? So moved. Second. Been moved and properly seconded to adopt the agenda. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Do you have any announcements beginning with Mr. Harwell? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. I have none either. Oh, Miss Peak, uh, do we have some announcements, Miss Peak? <laughs> Since we have everybody here tonight, uh, it's with uh, great pride that we have the largest number of students that have graduated from the Mobile County Public Schools thus far, and we still have summer graduations and others. But uh, we had 3,720 students that graduated from the Mobile County Public Schools. Uh, the initial count, and as I said thus far, those students in the class of 2018 have earned $142 million in scholarships, and more, more scholarships are still coming in. So the class of 2018 is a dynamic group of young people, along with other good news to share. Uh, about graduation, you'll recall LaFleur High School, uh, we had a student who was at Children's Women's Hospital and could not be at graduation, and she graduated remotely with a robot that she was driving from the hospital that came and got the, uh, accepted the graduation diploma. As of today, there have been 16 million uh, 700,000 views of that, and that doesn't count um, views on Facebook and Twitter and those types of things, went worldwide. So that to me speaks volumes that people like good news and like to hear good stories, and it has really circled the world over with that and everyone really supporting that young lady in her graduation. So that's good news to share tonight. Absolutely. Um, reports and recognitions. Yes, we have several. <laughs> As you can see by the crowd. All right, first I'd like to call forward Mr. Stringfellow, ER Dixon Principal Katrina Ken, and any other representatives from ER Dixon. I think we have the student council with us. E.R. Dixon Elementary School has been named a Be Healthy School by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama. The school will receive a $10,000 grant to provide educational activities encouraging students to make healthy choices. Mrs. Ken said she is proud of E.R. Dixon for being a beacon in the community with its focus on health, wellness, and fitness. She said, quote, we realize that there is a mind-body connection and that healthy bodies create healthy minds. Congratulations. Grant for $10,000 for uh, the 
Blue Cross Blue Shield for what was the title to that? Be healthy. Be healthy. <laughs> 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 And they also had a student that won one of the community awards that Mr. Fredgill and I was talking about that night. So uh, they've done an excellent job, and this is just one more thing that kind of tops off the year for them. So what I'd like to present here is a certificate of recognition to E.R. Dixon Elementary School for the Blue Cross and Blue Shield and Alabama to be healthy school. And it's signed by our superintendent, Steve, and all the board members. I'll give you a chance to talk to the congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm pleased to have uh, with me uh, several staff members, uh, our PE department that will be instrumental in facilitating all of the activities that will be put into good use with our students, and of course, our students who will be the direct recipients of uh, this, this grant by being involved in activities to stimulate the mind, body, and soul connection. So we're excited about this at ER Dixon, and we thank you for this opportunity to be recognized in this fashion. Thank you. together. The school is Davidson High School. So Mr. Stringfellow, you'll be here for just a few more minutes. Um, Mr. Lewis Copeland, the principal, will you come forward? Also members of the HiQ team with sponsor Ginger Golson and students Isabel Bella, Joseph Stoddard, and Rohan Badvi. Davidson High School has received several academic accolades over the past few weeks that we would like to recognize tonight. First, the school received a silver rating by U.S. News and World Report. The school was recognized in part because one out of every three students is enrolled in advanced placement courses. Second, the school's Q team won its third straight county championship and competed in a national tournament, finishing third. And next, we have Rohan Bodvi. Wait. <laughs> He's named a National Merit Scholar. He has already been accepted into the Early Admissions Program of the University of South Alabama College of Medicine, where he plans to study radiology. Rohan has been working with scientists at the University of South Alabama Mitchell Institute for three years, researching how canola and olive oil can protect skin cells against UV damage. Does it work? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, it's unusual for a student to score a perfect 36 on the ACT college entrance exam. What is really unusual is for two students from the same school to make perfect scores. But that's exactly what happened this year, thanks to juniors Isabel Bella, you wait, and Joseph Stoddard. They are just juniors, so we're looking forward to what you're gonna accomplish when you're seniors. Congratulations. Well, Mr. Copeland, I, I don't know what you can do for a final exit other than, um, by the way, Mr. Copeland is retiring after 51 years. Right. I did remember 36 years at Davidson High School. I might have added that fine young principal from ERD. That's, That's my principal. Oh. My, my principal, Mr. Copeland. I just wondered, I just wondered how many other people in this audience since you <laughs> anyway, um, we've got uh, third place finish in the national high competition. I was here that day and watched it. Couldn't get a one answer correct, but they did a wonderful job competing with teams from across the country. And so we've done an outstanding job of that. Then we have our two uh, uh, ACT uh, students at 436, and I, you probably have to double my number. Yeah, 
then the Davidson High School was recognized uh, in the silver medal for the uh, rank number 36 uh, in the U.S. News and World Report. Is that correct, Mr. Thompson? 36 in the state. 36 in the state. I will never get all of these correct and passed out, so I'm going to give them to you. So, but Mr. Coulter, come forward and say something. You, you earned it. I think I did this time right there. Oh. Oh. Do I have the mic? Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you very much for the recognition. You know, we have some outstanding students at Davidson. I'm always glad to see my students get recognized for their hard work and the, the great staff that we have. And 51 years has went by fast, and the last 36 were the best. Uh, they were at Davidson High School, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. But calendar pages keep turning, and finally it hits you, and it's time to go. And this is a good year for me. But this was an outstanding group before you, and there are many more at Davidson High School doing good things. Anyway, I'll have a certificate for the high school team, and it's for your third place finish in the National High School Championship, also for the two students, that's 436 in the National Merit student and also for the finishing 36 in the state. So, yes. Mr. Copeland, I want your last, one of your last responsibilities. You've got the idea. Kind of like, kind of like, uh, you know <laughs> better than I do. Okay. Kind of like in that problem, the hockey championship. Yeah. Yeah. Hockey, here. Mr. Stringfellow, you can also add that the high Q team was first in Mobile County. Uh, absolutely. They had to do that in order to get right. Ready. I'd like to call forward Denton Magnet School Principal James Gill and members of Denton's TSA team. Denton Magnet School of Technology has a TSA team, which stands for Technology Student Association. The TSA team recently competed phenomenally at the state competition, winning individual and group awards. And I'm going to get Mr. Gill to help me hand out these certificates as I say the names. Michael Kehe, second place in coding and third place in CAD foundations. Angelo Rivera, fourth place in digital photography. Dipanjali Nandi, sixth place in career prep. Malak Fakwaha, third place in essays on technology. And Michael Kihi, Dipanjali Nandi, and Ben Basil, fifth place inventions and innovations. Dipanjali Nandi and Michael Kihi, second place in website design. Dipanjali Nandi and Michael Kihi. 
Elijah Nicholson, Kenya Thomas, second place leadership challenge. Lydia Nicholson, Lily Marzullo, and Michael Kehe, sixth place <coughs> leadership challenge. And then Lydia Nicholson, will you raise your hand? She is the middle school vice president for the entire state of Alabama. Oh. And there were more, but they could, did I miss anyone? Kenya Thomas for a leadership challenge, second place. That's it. Well, Mr. Gill, I'd like to congratulate Dent and your staff and all of these students for a job well done. And Mr. Ackridge, don't leave because some of these people you might want to hire one day, okay? <laughs> because they, they, they've done an outstanding job, and Mr. Gill, you and your staff has done an outstanding job of setting that technology school up, and we're looking for big and better things from you. And by the way, I like the shirts. I think they look really good. Like that. So, Mr. Gill, would you like to say anything? This is, uh, we've accomplished this in our, only our second year in existence. We get students from across the county uh, that come in. Uh, they represent us extremely well. This is only a small portion of what they've been through as far as the different competitions. Uh, we've started out with competitions at Faulkner State, uh, Birmingham. Uh, we even have some that will be going to the Nationals in Atlanta very shortly. Raise your hand if you're going to the Nationals. So we have a team going to the Nationals that will represent Mobile County at a national level. So a uh, great group of students, great group of uh, teachers that, that instruct them in there. And I think we're, uh, we're setting the uh, high school up for uh, some very fine students that will come out. Uh, currently, Mr. Copeland and his uh, Davidson robotics team has no mercy on us, but I think we can, uh, we can compete in just a very few short years with them. Thank you. And now I'd like to call for, forward Mr. Harwell, Lott Middle School Principal Jason Golden, and Assistant Principal Melissa Wiggum. Lott Middle School in Citronelle has been selected as an Imagine Nation Beacon School for showing above and beyond enthusiasm and innovative use of the Imagine Math program. Students in grades 6, 7, and 8 use the Imagine Math online program weekly in math class. As a result, math scores are on the rise at Lott Middle. ACT Aspire scores went up 11% two years in a row, and this past year all three grade levels met their target goals on the state's global scholar exams. Congratulations. Superintendent School Board, appreciate what y'all done, and uh, congratulations. And using your, I, I read a little bit about this while ago, and it's uh, it's it's really a war where you go beyond what the normal is, and it's not just you, but your students and your. Uh, and talked about the community, and everybody's is bought into what you're doing, and we appreciate it because your math scores, like Mr. Renee said, has went up, and that's what you want to do when you target something and you went beyond what you would normally have to do to do that. We appreciate it. And again, we appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate you. Hey, we all know Jason. Great guy. We uh, would like to thank um, the board, Ms. Peake, uh, for this recognition tonight. Our students have really worked hard over the past three years, and it, you know, they even work on, at night and on holidays to increase their math score. So you know, we thank you for this opportunity this evening.
Dr. Foster, can you come forward? And Nicole Spotswood from Dawes Intermediate School and Principal Michelle McClung. For the second year in a row, Mobile County Public Schools has one of the state's top educators when it comes to technology and innovation. Nicole Spotswood, who teaches at Dawes Intermediate, has received the Alabama Department of Education's Chiquita Marbury Award for Technology Innovation. Ms. Spotswood serves as a technology support teacher, the Broadcast and Journalism Club sponsor, and is part of the school's leadership team. She has been teaching for 10 years and has recently earned her certificate in educational leadership. According to her principal, Mrs. McClung, Mrs. Spotswood is an incredible leader who pushes all of the teachers at Dawes to be better educators each and every day. Congratulations. Well, uh, long distance here. Let me get over closer so I can actually hand it to you. Uh, this says that this, is, uh, that this certificate of recognition is awarded to Nicole Spotswood for the Chiquita Marbury Technology Innovation Award, and it is signed by our superintendent and each member of the board and we're certainly proud of you and certainly proud of the efforts uh, that you make doing what it is that you do at Daw School and the leadership that you have uh, presented for you each day uh, by Ms. McClung. Congratulations. No, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to recognize the teachers for the outstanding things that they do. And um, Ms. Spotswood is an amazing educator and leader, and the progression that she's used with technology has inspired so many teachers. So and thank you. And students, we saw a lot of our former students up here just a second ago. Now I'm going to hand over the microphone to Cliff Allred, math supervisor for the school system. We have one more student from Denton who just arrived. So Jalen Robinson, can you come up? He is the Technology Student Association Student of the Year. Oh. I'd like to ask if the winners from the fifth grade math competition, uh, if their principals and team sponsors will come forward, please. Saturday, May the 5th, we had approximately 252 fifth grade students gather in the gymnasium at Clark Shaw Middle School, and uh, they showed up for the sole purpose of taking a math test. They spent an hour taking a math test, had a short break, and then they competed in uh, several rounds of ciphering so that we could find out who our top mathematicians are in the fifth grade throughout our school district. Uh, it's a competition which not only our schools participate in, but we have a, a private school to join us every now and then as well. And so we want to recognize some of these students and their leaders tonight. Um, we do our best to avoid ties as much as we can. Um, to wit, every written test has two bonus questions. and. When, so when we have a tie, that means that not only did those students have the best score overall up to that point, but it means they also evidently got the same number of points on the bonus questions. And um, y'all, I, I try really hard not to have that happen. And uh, so two young fellows got me this time. Uh, one of those is Igor Bublenik from Dawes Intermediate, and Ms. McClung's going to set his certificate for him. 
And then the other was Liam West. <laughs> Not only did these two young men tie for first place in uh, the individual uh, part of the competition, but Liam was also a member of council's team, uh, which won ciphering, which is not the easiest thing in the world to do, but they were also the number one team overall. And so just a really good day for them. Uh, I want to recognize those students. Tin Ma. Sure. Ishan Sharma. Hudson Spivey. Nyla Smith. Congratulations. If we can get a picture, Dr. Crenshaw Council's yours, right? Yeah. So you want to come up here? Yeah, no, my grandson is there. Oh, okay. Oh, it's Mr. Battles. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to get in trouble there. <laughs> <laughs> Squeeze in. <laughs> so move. Okay, that uh, concludes uh, our reports and recognitions with one exception. I just happened to think about this uh, earlier in the evening and uh, yesterday we had uh, an award ceremony out in the um, lobby. We have what's called a giving tree out there and people who have made a significant contribution to the boys and girls in Mobile County through the school system uh, they receive a leaf on the tree, either at their retirement or during the, the course of time when they have received a significant award, as did Ms. Spotswood. And uh, we want to, uh, I want to call out those names now since we're in the reports and recognitions part of it. Uh, Ms. Spotswood, of course, received one yesterday, as did Ms. Two, who was the Secondary Teacher of the Year from Mary Montgomery and Mrs. Lynch, who was the Elementary Teacher of the Year from St. Elmo, Dr. Carroll, who is retiring at this time as well. Uh, she's an Assistant Superintendent. Uh, Mrs. Peak, our Superintendent, who is retiring, received one as well, as did a person who's not here tonight, and I'm gonna say his full name for you so you can get it, and you can tell him I said it. It's Thomas Tyler Sheffield, Jr. <laughs> and uh, we want to be sure that uh, y'all remind him that since he wasn't here, I said his whole name. And we want, we certainly want to congratulate them. I believe that was the number that we had yesterday, Ms. Peek. I couldn't think of uh, another, but um, anyhow, that was that was really a nice ceremony out there, and we're certainly we're certainly uh, indebted to those people who have performed over and above. Okay, uh, citizens' request. Uh, Ms. Peek is the uh, timekeeper on this. She'll let you know when a minute is left when you're speaking. Uh, when you're speaking, please do not in any way uh, impact the good name or character of an individual. And we may not, under any circumstances, use any language that is not, accepted, that is not acceptable in church. All right, the first person who will, according to the sign-up sheet, uh, Mr. Roland Hayes. Mr. Hayes, would you come forward at this time? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as as Ms. Peakwell knows, I have been a champion cheerleader for the Mobile County Public School System for many years, having uh, my children and grandchildren and myself graduate uh, from them in attendance of them now. And uh, after hearing all the good news and uh, all the great achievements tonight for our children and students, uh, I come with recommendations that we, the adults and the board, can great, make great achievements. 
and that's the safety and security of our children. Uh, I have two students in school uh, now, one in North Mobile County K through eight, and the other one in high school at Citronelle High School. And uh, so I have uh, two great reasons to be concerned about the safety and security of our children. I emailed all the board members uh, today as well as give you a hard copy of my agenda and, and recommendations there. But first of all, I want to speak to the things that we see in the news and the things we've not seen in the news recently. We all know about the school shooting in, in uh, Parkland in South Florida and the one in Santa Fe, Texas last week. However, you don't hear about uh, Dixon, Illinois, where five days just before Santa Fe, where at the school, they had an armed, certified, trained police officer, resource officer at the school, an active shooter. This resource officer, police officer, was on the scene of the shooting less than a minute, having been on campus, chase the shooter out of the school, the shooter turned and shot at the officer, and the officer shot him dead. The only way to stop a person with a gun is another person with a gun that's trained and knows how to use it. Also in Maryland, back in March, similar situation at Grant Mills High School, where two students were wounded, and here the same thing happened. Resource officers on the scene at the shooting less than one minute shot and killed the shooter in self-defense as the police officer approached him. We don't hear about those in the news because that's uh, not something to be discussed. We only hear about the 10 and the 20 plus that are killed. At the Santa Fe shooting, two trained resource officers at the school and the chief of police happened to be going in at the time the call went out for the <coughs> shooting. One officer was shot the chief of police got that officer out of the way and shot and injured the shooter. Now, imagine, I've been given five minutes to speak here tonight. If it took a 911 dispatch call to take five minutes, three minutes, 10 minutes, a person with a gun, with a knife, a machete, whatever, can kill and injure a lot of people in that time. In my outline, I, I listed five things that we could do. Most of all of these five things Baldwin County has already implemented with the trained officers. And these are not just resource officers. I recommend when you look at doing this, and hopefully you will do it, that we, one, don't have employees of the school board as resource officers, but have city police officers from the municipalities in which the school is in, our deputy sheriffs from Mobile County, that have arrest power, are trained, certified, and know how to use a firearm where we can stop these intruders. We got signs on every school right now that says no guns allowed. You might as well say, come in with your guns and shoot and kill our kids. We need to be publicizing. We've got people there that if you come in and you start to shoot and kill our children, we're gonna shoot and kill you. That will stop our children being killed. Also, we need to look at the liability issue you know by doing nothing you're being negligent and i know there's going to be a cost factor and that's what you're going to say you know this is going to cost money well baldwin county is implemented chickasaw is implemented sarah land is implemented satsuma has implemented why can't mobile county implement it but if you do nothing you just imagine what the cost is going to be had santa fe been mobile alabama and it had been on the news it wouldn't be filled tonight with parents who are proud of parents and there's children. It'd be lawyers here tonight handing you indictments and lawsuits for negligence on your part of doing nothing. We've got to do something. We need to limit the entrances and exits. Mobile County must limit. Bowen County's done. They only have one entrance and exit to each and every school. Ms. Peake says I have one minute. You have my outline. In closing, I want to say this, I support you. I'm for you. I'm not here tonight to bash you. I'm here tonight to give you my undivided support and my recommendations of what we need to do. And in closing, I want to say this. If it's good enough for you, each and every one of you, 
if what I'm recommended here tonight is good for you, look standing right over there. You've got an armed Mobile County Deputy Sheriff here tonight guarding you. Why not do the same thing for our children? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Cassetta B. Jackson. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, Carolyn Mays, Carolyn B. Mays. Good evening. Yes, Good evening. Uh, I'm Minister Cassetta Blanks Jackson. Uh, I'm here tonight because uh, I have my dates down where my sister and I request some information, and it's public information, and no one is responding, responding to the information we are asking for. And on this first occasion, April the 16th, at 2.27 p.m. of this year, I come by and did the information. Also on that same date, uh, I called at 3.38 p.m. And I spoke with someone uh, in another office. May 1st, at 1.45 p.m., I feel like the request form. And when I came on the first time, she should have told me I need to fill out the request form. So that's May 1st. May 8, 11, 20, 21 a.m., I called. May 14, at 1, 12 p.m., I called. So, you know, the ladies in the office, you know, receptionists, I guess they knew my number, so they're not answering my calls. May 21st at 3.10 p.m., no answer. So I know y'all not illiterate up in here. You know the information. I asked for me and my sister. And you see all the signs over here, sitting, you know, standing up by the chairs. And, and as of tonight, we demand that information. So I did the proper thing to fill out the request form. We demand it tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Um, I feel that a teacher is a child's uh, minister because the teacher uh, dis decides how that child is going to be in the future. So I've asked uh, Ms. Peek to talk to the teachers about their dress code. Now that dress code at George Hall is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. They come up in there with leggings on and old sandals and just anything they can find. But those are our children and those are babies and they are watching. And we want uh, them to represent what they're supposed to be. You are, you are training the future of this country when you come to school as a teacher. And you're not supposed to have those kind of clothes on. So I want you to talk to them again about their clothing because it's ridiculous. That's not the way you're supposed to look. Like they got some old bitches on you like they was going out to dig up a garden. Ain't no wrong with be, being a gardener, but you don't come to present yourself and our children can be presidents and board members and they're not supposed to be looking like that. They're supposed to be teaching our children something and that's wrong. And I want you to talk to them about their dress code because it's ridiculous and our children should not have to look at that. That's, that's pathetic. That's pathetic. And also the principal over there. She, she repeats some kind of stuff she's been doing for a long time. And I want you to talk to her about that. Talk about bail thought, thought, and other this, this kind of regurgitation. You know, she just keeps saying this kind of stuff. Okay, that's her philosophy and her belief system. She can say that all she wants. But she's there. She's a white woman talking to black children. She's telling them that she's the authority. That's fine. But she, they're looking at her as another race of person, thinking that that's their authority. Nobody else is authority. She need to keep her, uh, her philosophy to herself because none of us can come over there and give our philosophy and our beliefs. So she needs to start school, not go over there teaching 
uh, all these uh, other things that she thinks is all right, because we can't do it. We can't teach no religion and all that, so she shouldn't be teaching it. So I want you to speak to her about that. Also, I'm here about the dress code of our children. I think our dress code needs to be up and any. We need uh, better uh, clothing, uh, uniforms for our children. Well, I would like for our children to have jackets and things that represent their school. I want them to feel good about themselves when they come to school. Guys with ties and jackets and things on, and girls with nice dresses and things that makes them look good. This means something. It might not mean nothing to you, but back in the day, it meant something. Because you are, you're, you're talking about the future. That's what you're talking about, the future. Also about Williamson and May Eames. My goal is that May East is to be built on her history. I know y'all gonna giga, giga, giga all you want, but whatever it takes, May East will be built on her street, and Wilson will be in high school again because what? We have not had a band at Wilson for two years. A high school with no band, no band, nothing. Our children are on the same hallway and the same school as the middle and high together, but not in Central Nail, not that big old state school I saw out there in the newspaper that Superintendent Pete was uh, all happy to get about. I'm not pleased about it. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to stand by it. That's our tax dollar, too, and that's our money, too. And we want good stuff, too. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Mays. Ladies, if you could give me the copy of the request that you suspended, the information you requested, I'll make every attempt to try to provide that information to you as your district representative. Okay, thank you. Um, Linda Wilson. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Linda Wilson, and I'm an alumnus of Williamson High School. And uh, I'm coming this evening with uh, a few follow-up points to our rezoning proposal, um, as was presented in 2016, and um, a renewed proposal, which was presented <clears throat> last month, April of 2018, at the town hall meeting at Williamson High School. <clears throat> During that town hall meeting and also in 2016, we requested the rezoning of the districts of Williamson High School and Williamson Grades Prep. So we come again today to request uh, assurances that the following crucial elements are included in the final draft of the board's decision to honor the request of the parents, the students, alumni, and the Maysville community. And those crucial elements are bullet A, the rezoning plan for Williamson and Middle Grades Prep, formerly known as Eanes Middle School, is zoned to reflect one inclusive district that will consist of boundaries from the former Eanes Middle School model. Crucial bullet B, that adequate personnel, teacher units, transportation and individual student allocations and other necessary resources to include additional Title I and Title II funding are included. Crucial bullet C, that a map is clearly constructed that reflects the original boundaries of the former Eanes Middle School District prior to its closing that illustrates the new zone of both Williamson High School and Williamson Middle Grades Prep. These are just a, a summary of some of the things that we expect <clears throat> to be a part of the final uh, drafting of the rezoning proposal. And there are others who will follow me to reiterate those bullet points. Thank you. And I have copies for each member of the board for your reference. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wilson. Okay, next is uh, uh, Prattis Williams. Hi. Hi. I'm here to speak on the Williamson issue also. At the town hall meeting that was held in Maysville Community, I spoke upon the zoning issues in, the particular regard, in particular regarding the students that are attending 
attending other schools, both middle and high school, that should be zoned to Williamson High School and middle grade prep. The suggestion that I made is that the children that live in the middle grades prep zone formerly May Ings Middle School should be zoned all zoned to Williamson grades prep and high school since it is the sole feeder to Williamson High School. The children that live in the Williamson High School district should be zoned to the Williamson High School and middle grades prep in order to rectify the zone issues as promised in 2016. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Williams. Okay, Deshara Carey. Hello. Um, I just want to um, in, speak to the board in regards to the same zoning issue, but what I want to ask is that we actually um, postpone the proposal it, um, until certain things are met to include the actual zone where it's clearly defined and to make sure that all of the things that were um, entailed by Ms. Wilson to include the actual um, teachers, the necessary resources to support the zoning change are put in place. That's what, I'll, that's what my request is. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Foster. Yeah. I'm sorry, that it be po Excuse postponed. Me, I'm sorry. I apologize. That it be postponed to the next board meeting just to give time in order for if those adjustments have not been put in place. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Yes. Mr. Uh, to the people who come about the ways and proposed zoning, tonight we're going to pass this zoning that we have now. Um, it's been a long time even just getting to the table, even talking about zoning and trying to make some significant change to increase the population so that we could get the things that we need at Williamson High School. What I have here, and uh, since I don't have time to just go over it tonight, I plan on calling a town meeting to discuss with the parishioners and to the uh, alumni and the people of Mayville concerning this zoning change and will provide for them also what I'd like to say, too, is that uh, uh, the zoning has been a significant problem. This zoning tonight that we're going to entertain only entertains from Murphy to Williamson High School. But at the same time, though, in previous years, we've had no attention to the zoning in order to try to make any adjustments so that we could rectify the position and increase the quality of education and enrollment. But at that town meeting, I should have for you not only the list of the streets that's involved with the zoning change, but also the complimentary that uh, the first 20 days of school, we make the adjustments concerning teachers and the quality of teachers, and we will follow that up. I promise you that as your commissioner that I'll be able to, and I'd just like all the people who are here tonight for the ways so just to stand up a minute. Thank you. And so I'll be getting back with you. Uh, we're not going to postpone this tonight. We're going to pass this tonight because I believe that we got to start somewhere. And as your district commissioner, I am your voice. I am the person who will represent and articulate the needs of the community. After we do this meeting and then come up, whatever you feel to the show, then we'll come back again to the table and try to move in another direction. But I'd like to thank the superintendent, Mr. Mixon, and Mr. Threadgill for the energies that they've already taken in trying to address this issue that has not been addressed for a long time. Williamson High School is just as important as any school in this district. And as your representative, I promise you that uh, I'll be your voice. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Battles. OK. Um, We'll move to the action items at this time, Ms. Peek. There are two items that uh, we're pulling for further study. Uh, we'll bring them up again shortly. Uh, item um, G3 is being pulled for further study, and item H8 for further study. And we'll, we'll bring those back after we've answered a number of questions for the board on those items. H8. H8. Consent agenda item um, H8. That's an annexation. Yes. All right. Until we, we've had a number of questions 
on those items. We'll further study, give you those answers, and bring them back. All right. Okay. Uh, G1, we ask that you approve a revised contract for the University of Southern Mississippi to be the external evaluator for an NSF grant. You approved this earlier. Uh, for the JROTC STEM camp evaluation. Uh, just some wording had to be changed in the, governmental, the governing law and attorney fee paragraphs, minor changes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. As much as we've vetted these items in our work session, I'd like to offer a motion to approve, approve items one through 12. That excludes three. We've had Excluding the, I'm sorry. the items uh, requested by the superintendent that be excluded. That would be item three. Item, item three. three, correct. Mm -hmm. G3 is excluded. So we have a, a motion to Second. approve one through 12, and it's been seconded. Is there any discussion of any of this that we're approving at this time? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ask that you would approve in G13 a contract with Bishop State Community College right. to provide to college myself. courses for students in the 21st Century Learning Grant Program at Bryant High School. It's a cost of $10,000 that will be paid out of the 21st Century Grant Funds. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> move for approval action items G13 through 24. Okay, it's been moved uh, for items 13 through 24 to hear second. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Any other discussion of any of these? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Action item Mr. G. Mr. President. Yes. Let the record show that I abstain on items 13 and 24. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, Dr. Crenshaw abstained on items 13 and yeah. items 24. Yeah. Action item G25, we'd ask that you approve certified resignations <coughs> listed under separate cover. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Offer motion to approve items 25 through 35. Second. 24. No, uh, 25 through 35. We went through 24. Uh, it's been moved and properly seconded to approve items 25 through 35. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ms. Peake? That brings us to consent items in H. H1, we'd ask that you give consent to uh, the rezoning of students currently attending Williamson High School in grades 6 through 8 who are zoned for Murphy, that those that zone be changed, that those students would remain in the Williamson High School Prep, Williamson Prep and High School zone. So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly, any, uh, it's been moved and properly seconded uh, for H1. Is there any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ms. Peake. Action item H2, we'd ask that you give consent to naming the Dodge Elementary Playground and track for Dr. Suzanne Christ, who is retiring from Dodge Elementary School. Mr. Right. Chairman, yes. I, would, I would like to make a recommendation that H2 to H, was it that, 9? Yes. That we approve for adoption. Now, eight is pulled, so it'd be uh, H2 through H7 and nine. H9. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ms. Peake? Action uh, item uh, H10, we'd ask that you approve out of county travel as listed. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Move for approval, action. Items H, 10, and 11. Second. Second. Been moved and properly seconded to approve items H, 10, and 11. All in favor, uh, any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ms. speak. Uh, items I, student expulsions, we'd ask that you approve student expulsions 1 through 11 as listed under separate cover. Do you hear a motion? Motion to approve. 
Do I hear a second? Second. And moving properly seconded. Uh, now, was that for 1 through 11? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Been moved and properly seconded to approve student expulsion items 1 through 11. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ms. Peek. Agenda uh, information items in J. We'd ask that you approve the monthly financial statement and purchase and in J1 and in J2 purchase orders of $5,000 and over as we normally uh, have in the board agenda. Okay, these, these items are just for our information. They do not require approval or anything. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll move on to uh, K. Any further item discussion? Any old business? Any board superintendent requests other than those that Mr. Battles made earlier? Any pending matters? Mr. Attorney, I believe you sent us some emails regarding some uh, something, did you not? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Offer most of approve the matters forward to us by the attorney, which is pending the legal matters. Second. And moved and properly seconded to approve those items that were contained in the attorney's uh, emails to us. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Scheduling of meetings. Um, I had asked the board to uh, hold Wednesday, May the 30th, for a special call meeting. It's a busy time of year. I'd ask that the board uh, agree to come in on the 30th for a special call meeting at 12 o'clock. Okay, I noticed too, Ms. Peek, that um, we have uh, uh, also, Ms. Tack provided us with some information regarding two hearings that are scheduled on the 6th of June and on the 13th of June. Okay, let me back up since that wasn't on my list. All right, <laughs> May 30th, June 6th, and June 13th. We have three hearings then, and I'll I'll have um, uh, the board secretary to uh, remind us of this, and also I'll get with you. Uh, to discuss Ms. Abrams with, the, uh, with regard to what we've been asked to do by uh, student services with uh, student hearings. Okay. But please put those on your calendar if you uh, want. Gentlemen, I think also you've received an email requesting that you come in and be involved in a, a professional development training session. Mr. Threadgill sent you an email on that. So we'll have... Uh, Ms. Abrams reminds you of that too. What, what, is, what date is that? Sometime between the 4th and the 6th. 6th. Is it 4th? Okay, it'll be June 6th then. Is it 4th or 6th? Okay. Mr. We have a hearing on that day, Mr. Hack. Or just the 6th? The 6th. <laughs> How long will it last? Well, let's see if it if it resolves, and if not, we we need to reschedule that because this is an opportunity for the for the board as well to uh, follow through on on uh, one of the ideas that Mr. Treadgill has right. with regard to uh, meeting with the uh, uh, school. Uh, I mean, with the uh, feeder pattern schools. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Chairman? I just want to uh, make an announcement since we're talking about graduation. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about our failing schools at Viagra High School, a young lady got 11 scholarships. Uh, they had over $3 million in scholarships. Uh, at Blunt High School, another failing school, they had $11 million worth of uh, scholarships. A young man signed with the Naval Academy. Uh, and again, the graduation rate was pretty high. Uh, that's all from a, a two failing schools. And that's simply, I'm being sarcastic because, again, I just don't believe that these are true failing schools. They're going to say that BC Rain graduation rate, I think, is 86, 87 percent. So it just goes to show you that one test at one grade level cannot determine the abilities of our students. And uh, I just think that that, that needs to be said for the record uh, for individuals from these colleges that come in and give those kind of scholarships from a failing school. 
You know, Dr. Crenshaw, I'd like to echo a little bit about that of thought. Some of my best thoughts, I think, come at 2 o'clock in the morning when I wake up and begin anticipating the day. But evidently, the colleges and universities don't uh, recognize the failing school list and don't limit their perception of what happens. I don't think they really zero in on that because they go ahead and look at the individual students and their accomplishments. And uh, certainly, these are students who've met all those requirements to for college entrance. I'll also, let me add too, in all of our schools across Mobile County, we had over 104, we had 104 athletes that signed um, athletic scholarships. All of them had met the academic requirements for college entrance too. Um, yeah, absolutely, and um, I would certainly echo what Dr. Crenshaw said. He and I are always on the same page on that issue. Do I hear uh, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Been moved and properly seconded for adjournment. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.